Hello again. I have another amazing little kit that I have designed for the Disabled Artist Foundation. This is a really simple little book that I made um, using um, supplies that I have, that I have purchased, that have been donated, and it's very enjoyable. So, here's our book, and this is made with these ATC um, cards, but they're, they're called an Urban Artist Painting Board, and they're really thick and very heavy. And I, the minute I seen them, I thought, they have to be a book. Yeah, that tends to be something I do a lot. So I just used a printable that I had stuck in somewhere. And I made an accordion book. And I put little pictures. I used some washi tape. I have a pocket right here. And that is where the two pieces of paper overlap to make this the size it is. I have little pockets in different places. And then when you flip it over, the side is all decorated too. Now let me show you what comes in your kit. It comes in this manila envelope. Let's just kind of take it all out. And I have <laughs> another... No rhyme, no reason, you know, just kind of what I do. And um, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. There we go. So we have, of course, we have our boards for the covers. And then we have some assorted prints. We have dictionary pages. We have... Um, like the legend from a map, little brown paper sacks, some uh, gold stamps, gold bond stamps, sheet music, another dictionary, little printable images, a couple little printed tags, some other printables. This is, um, I, I don't know if it's a printable or because it's blank. Or if it's just the way the ledger was made. Because it honestly looks like ink with all the different colors. Some different card stock to use however you want. This one happens to have a little braille paper. Some lined paper. And other little papers. And these are for decorating your book. And as always, you can use what's in the kit. There should be plenty to finish the book. But there's always room to add more. And, um, you know, you want to make it your own anyway. So I'm going to pull all this to the side. And I'm going to show you with um, the papers and this, how to make the structure. Okay? So first of all, I am going to use my scoring board and we're going to double check this. We know it's an ATC size, two and a half by three and a half. And like on this one, um, let me grab a, a ruler to hold instead of trying to use this mat. This one is three and a quarter by two and three eighths. So just so I don't forget, let's get my handy dandy little Grinch. And I'm gonna write over here on this piece of paper. I already forgot, can you believe that? Two and three eighths by three and a quarter. I always write it off to the side on something so I know before I ever get started what I need. So this paper is cut to just 
over three and a quarter so it'll be okay so what you want to do is you want to get on your scoreboard which is what I prefer and if you notice all this it's white on white so I just colored it with a pencil so I could read it better and uh, it works pretty good but I think I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to score this without my scoreboard if you do have a paper trimmer like this I've seen people take it in and they put it at two and three eighths one two three eighths and then they run their score tool or stylus right down that groove so that's one way and um, you can use your scoreboard or you could you know Put it down on something and and uh, measure without a scoreboard or cutting. Let's just do it. So we're going to go to two and three eighths. Put a little mark. Come down here and do two and three eighths. Give us a mark. We put our ruler here up against that mark and up against that mark and score so there is your first fold now you can go ahead and fold it like this if you want to and you know do the accordion fold or you can go and score it for each one which if I wasn't using my scoreboard I would put a little mark right there and I am going at an angle so that I am just under the paper so that I have room for the, the thickness of the ruler and all that stuff just just a little bit of give there and I'm, I've got it lined up up here and down here with my little tick marks and I'm gonna score and you can erase all these little score marks afterwards now let's just see how accurate we are. See, we're off a little bit, so I'm just going to take it because if you don't fix it now, it's going to be a pain to fix later. And there we're all lined up. So if you wanted to, you can easily go and keep folding. I just find for myself, I do better if I score. Now what else you could do is if you want to, after you've got your first one scored like that, and a nice even um, place to uh, rest your tool against don't don't score like this like you normally do score in at an angle so that you stay accurate with all the folds and don't um, get it too far past where it really needs to fold and it stays nice and even so um, again I'm off a little bit and I tell you, when it comes to an accordion fold, that's one fold that we just don't get along all the time. And so now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get this last little bit. And score and fold that. And your kit comes with two pieces. So, um... Hmm. I don't know what I did with the rest of my papers because these two go with this one and there we are I have like six videos to cut today and all my little piles are lined up over here so we're going to do the same thing with this one but to speed this up a little bit for me I'm going to use my scoreboard I'm going to go check my measurements again. Two and three eighths. Boom. And then when I use this, I come over here and I do two and three eighths. And I fold it. And I think that for me, this is the best way. I almost get it straight every time. Notice I say almost. There's a little give right there and two and three eighths so you, when you get it all folded 
I'm sorry. I tend to work up here where I can see it, and you guys can't see it. The bifocals, what can they say? So anyway, you have two pieces like this, and you need to somehow make these two and these two work together. So if you want to, I mean, it doesn't really matter because you could take this one and glue it to this one, the short one, and then whatever you decorated on this side, <coughs> you'll cover up that seam. And then you can glue this to the cover and this one to the cover and it'll all fold up great. I tended to, on mine, I wanted to glue this one in here. So I will grab a clamp. And I'm going to put that one there. And then I'm going to take my other board and I'm going to... Um, Clamp it onto this one, and it doesn't matter if you're using which side because you're going to cover all that black up anyway. So we're going to set that out. Well, it doesn't quite work this way because these two need to overlap. So we're going to experiment, and we'll do it this way and see how that works. And yes, <laughs> if you glue these two together, that makes one solid page. So what I did is when I glued these two together, I glued it to be a pocket. And all I did for the pocket, where I put them together, is on one side, I put a little half a circle. So it doesn't matter which one. You could do them both. You could do one or the other. I'm going to do a half a circle there. And set it up again. Make sure you're all aligned. And if it was me trying to get through this quickly, I would glue these two together first. Because um, this will give you your pocket and the alignment and make sure everything is in the correct way to be hooked to your book. And it's still... You look at this, you got it hooked in different directions. So that's something else you got to keep in mind when you put your papers, your covers on it. They're still going to line up. They're just going to be kind of different. One up and one's down. So anyway, with that being said, I'm trying to get this where I have more work room. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my art glitter glue with my pretty little skull glue hole stopper dilly thing. And I'm going to put my glue, double check it, always double, double, triple, and quadruple check it. So I'm going to put a stream of glue right around the edge so that I can make a pocket out of this. Whoops, I didn't want to go up there. My glue is not real straight, but when, when you're done and you let this glue up, you can make your tag that fits inside of it fit inside of it after you're done. So that means, you know, cut, measure and cut it and see if it fits. So you have that. And now we need to take the covers. Uh, not used to have another cute little skull to stick in here. Okay. So I've got the pages done. And now we're going to have to put the covers on. And basically, you're just going to glue them on just like that. So this one gets glued at the front. And I'm going to um, use the glue stick because it's, it's faster.
And again, I'm going to double check that to make sure. And I'm going to glue it on there centered because it's just a tiny bit shorter on the top and the bottom. And you want it centered or even on the outside. So that one's glued down. Go ahead and fold it back up. And we'll put our glue on this one. And I like to take it and fold it back up so that I can keep everything where it's supposed to be. And it doesn't matter which goes in or which goes out. Get it on there. Center it. Line it up down here. Make sure everything's lined up. And then give it an extra little love in here. Get it all burnished down. Yeah, it's not the mailman today. It's too late for the mailman. But I'm sure they're protecting me from something. So I've got these all nice and burnished down. And there's the structure of the book right there. You can take some of your decorative papers. And I'm just going to grab a little container of scraps. And um, I'm going to cover this inside right here with this cute little piece of paper. It's a little bit small, but it's, it's okay. So I'm going to put the glue on this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have found that on this old fragile paper, the glue rips it a lot. And you can put glue, if you've ever put a, a colored glue stick on vintage paper and wondered why your color disappears, it's because it sucks it all up. Because it's just such an old paper. And I'm just going to smooth that down. I'm not worried if it matches perfectly on all the edges and if I wanted to and just I think I will I'm going to go ahead and put my glue on this side and fold this over in fact I think I'll kind of put a little bit of glue right here on this edge just to just to make it a little secure and fold this over and smooth it all out and then burnish it now I have a little overlap here and I will after it's dry come in here and pull that off or my favorite trick is to take an emery board and file the edges of the paper especially on that vintage paper it just comes off in no time flat so there we have one cover and let's do the other cover we might as well use the same style of paper except this time i want this other side on the outside so we're going to put this down by using a piece that you can wrap around that just saves you another step and that's pretty cool so i want I want this side to show, so it's going to have to be over here. I'm going to burnish that down. Put a little bit of glue right there. And I'm just going to cover just the board. And, of course, the paper, because it's stuck to the board. It's one with the board now. I'm going to flip this over. And it, actually, this one seems to fit a little bit better. It's pretty much, it's a little bit over, but not a whole lot. So there we have our book. And you can see a little bit of the edges on there, and that's okay, because um, we can antique the edges, which is probably what I would do next. And I'm grabbing my... I know a lot of people use vintage photo. I use the walnut stain. I just like it extra dirty or extra dark or something like that. But I have all three of the browns right there just within reach. 
so I can use whatever and there's also a black in there too so see I just just uh, ink the edges and you can't even tell that that's was white Go ahead and ink that one. I don't know. Have you guys ever used these? Um, they're from scrapbook.com. No affiliations. I just really like them. They're domed. And so you can blend your inks and do this. And you don't get those lines that you get with circles. Really like them. So anyway, that's what we would do with the whole thing. And that is the basic structure of your book. You have all kinds of papers in there. And I'm not going to go into the detail of how to um, decorate every page because I really like that people take and do what they want. I will talk you through some of the things I did in this one. Oh, and, and you also have the ribbon in there to tie your, your book shut. And this is just a background page. This doesn't have to stay this way, but it can because it's pretty cool. You know, maybe I just want to tear a little something and put it here. And something else that I've been doing, and maybe, I don't know, other people might do this too. And maybe I just am, you know, kind of weird this way. But I like taking my little colored paper scraps and adding them to the vintage. I just love that look. It's, um, I don't know, I, I can't explain it. But I like it. I like to have that just, in fact, I like that well enough. I'm going to just put it on real quick so I don't forget. And this has had some stuff punched out of it, so it's really a funky shape. I usually tear things and make them the way I want them, but I don't know. I really like this. I liked it when I laid it up here, and um, I, I, it's just different. I'm going to burnish that down, and while I have you here, and I'm working on this, I'm going to show you another little thing I do when I do the brights with the um, vintage. I take a, uh, this is a graphite, a woodless graphite pencil, probably one of my best vacation finds ever, just because it's easy to use, but any pencil will work. And I'm just going to go around the edges of my torn piece of paper here. And then I'm going to take a blending stump. And if you don't have a blending stump, you can use an eraser softly, or you can use your fingers. Or you can use a little piece of tissue. I like my blending stumps, and when they get real gunky on the ends. I just um, sand them off a little bit. I have been known to put them in a pencil sharpener. And I just give that a little bit of a shadow. So now even though it's bright, it still is kind of old looking mixing in with your paper. So you can decorate this anyway. As you can see, I've, and I've got that here. I've got um, a little pocket here just it was a cute little piece of um, paper and I wanted to use the whole thing so I put this little pocket piece of tea dyed paper a little printed image and some uh, like glassine just a little chunk of it for a tab there's an, an vintage woman photo um, I love numbers so I stick a number in everywhere there's a little tiny envelope there with a little tag it's really nothing, but it kind of, I guess it was a flower. And then I'm tagging the, in the pocket that's the middle of the book. Some more vintage women. This is my collage by threes. Um, if I've got three pieces, it makes a great little um, setting there. And just music paper and a little filigree in the corner. You come to this side. And this is just, um, I think this is probably a printable and a piece of washi tape. This is some of my junk paper that I had sewed together, and I just cut a chunk of it out and put it on there. Did the um, 
shading on the edges. Again, another pocket with the little tag. The um, glassine is the tab. This is washi tape and a piece of printable. Another vintage woman. And just some different ephemera I had. This is part of a page with the tag on it. And again, just some ephemera. So, um, another thing I did is, besides antiquing, or not antiquing, inking the edges, I used a brown marker and I drew the lines kind of like faux stitching. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Um, it's something I just do. You know, it's not something you have to do. I just want to show you the ways I've decorated and you can take it how you want. But one thing I wanted, because this is so stark in comparison to these. So if you don't have a lot of stamps, because in this one, I used stamps. I used a crackle stamp and I used a real dense um, dot stamp. And I like to use like words and, and script and stuff. But if for some reason you just don't have those things, I'm going to show you something else you can do to get your um, paper have some marks and kind of distressed looking. So, yes, I reached over and I reached in my trash can and I have this bag. So I'm going to take this and wad it up. I'm going to hit my distress ink pad and I'm just going to go all over it. And then I'm going to take that here. And I can get a distressed, old-looking paper in no time flat. Now, you don't have to just use a plastic bag. But, you know, you can even use, um, you know, a Walmart bag, grocery store bag. But, so you, you just carried out the trash and you have nothing left. So I'm going to take this piece of paper. This is a book page. And I'm going to crumple it several times. The only reason I crumple it several times is just to make it a little softer. And if you happen to grab a book page that you haven't used as a water paint palette, um, when you're done with it, you'll, you might even have a real cool piece of ephemera. So this one's liable to be a little bit stronger lines. Maybe, maybe not. Probably because it's an old book and it's sucking up its pages. Or page is sucking up the ink. But as you can tell, they definitely have two different looks. So this is a really good way to get some marks and make your paper kind of grungy like we like. But you know, it doesn't have to be grungy. It can be plain and decorated. There is no right or wrong. So you just go to town, you make the accordion, you remember the sizes so that you can make it and make everything consistent, put it all together, decorate it, and tie a pretty lace bow. And I don't know, um, most of you can probably tie a bow pretty good. But something I learned years and years ago in my, um, oh, the decade of craft shows I used to do. You tie a bow quickly, and they lay like this. And if you want it to lay just perfect, well, it's perf not perfect, but tie it backwards. See, your instinct, if you're right-handed, is to make that loop wrap this way. So what you want to do is you want to make the loop with the other hand. And it is awkward. It's very awkward. Because I find I can't get it as tight. I'm going to wrap it around with this one. And it's hopefully going to work this time. Most of the time, it will always put your bow... flat. So it goes the way you want it to go. 
Now, not always will that work, but most of the time it does. Um, I learned that, you know, many, many years ago doing craft shows, and it really clicked in at my girlfriend's wedding when we had to tie the bows on the backs of our dresses. And that made it lay so pretty. So, enjoy. I love to see pictures of your books. If you want to share them with me, you can share them in Cares Angels. And you can share them in Stitching Papers and Fabrics. So, thank you and have a great afternoon.